I was thinking about something the other day, and of all the tying I do, I could probably put it into three categories. And the first might be tying a known pattern, either from a book or a picture online, but definitely going by a recipe. Another kind of tying I do a lot of, it's just experimenting, playing around with different types of materials or colors. And maybe I'm working towards some type of theme, like high floating dry fly or a fuzzy nymph that sinks quickly. But really it's just experimenting, tying something up, taking it out on a lake or river and seeing if it works. And that can be a lot of fun. But one more type of tying I do a lot, and you don't see it much on this channel because it can be kind of boring, but it's just tying up a bunch of fish and flies to fill my fly boxes. And when I do that, sometimes it's just a combination of those first two types of tying. Maybe I'm tying up a bunch of known patterns, or maybe I'm changing them up just a little bit, so sort of experimenting, but really just filling my fly boxes. And I found a book last month up at the museum in the Catskills that's just perfect for this kind of tying. It's called Simple Flies by C. Boyd Pfeffer, published in 2005, but you can still find copies of it out there, and I'll put a link in the description. But the book is amazing. I can't believe that I just came across it. The whole premise of it is, tying flies with three materials or less, and there are a lot of them in here that are just two materials. And he's got all the types of flies, your dry nymphs, wets, streamers, warm water flies, even salt water flies. And it was the dry fly section that really caught my attention today. He's got several tactics for simplified dry flies. Things like skipping the wing, or cheating a little bit and using the tag end of a thread to wrap it up through the body to make it look like a quilled body or wrapping the body out of the same material that you use for the tail. So really, just a lot of interesting tactics and techniques in here. And the first one I want to do for you today is just wrapping a dry fly body out of foam, something that I really haven't ever done for a standard dry fly. But you know it's going to make this thing a solid floater. I don't know why more patterns out there don't use this technique. Well, maybe I know, because this is not a pretty fly. In fact, of all the flies in here, I wouldn't call any of them pretty. I don't think anybody's going to tie this thing up today Take a picture of it and put it on your Instagram. But what you might do is tie a dozen of these things and go fishing with them because they're cheap, easy, fast, and you know they're going to catch fish. And this one today, just a standard generic bayfly. Change the colors or the sizes. You can make this thing anything you want it to be. And I think that's pretty cool. So there's one in the vise, the first dry fly from what I'm calling this simplified dry fly technique. Again, don't worry about the colors. This one looks a little bit like a coffin fly, but you can make it with anything you want, in any size you want. I'm tying this on a 14. This is a one extra long barbless dry fly hook. And I am going to use some black thread, so go ahead and put a base down to the start of the bend. And I'm going to go with something stiff for the tail on this one. This is a moose body hair. About, I don't know, eight or so of these. Try this out right here. Maybe a body length. Let's try that. Can't wrap these too tight because, you know, they will flare on you. So just a couple loose wraps going back. Now some more loose wraps going up forward just to keep my underbody kind of smooth. Now here's where this gets pretty fun. Some one millimeter foam. Again, any color you want. I think a light color with a painted on rib is gonna look pretty good. So you can see this is really thin stuff right there and I've cut a pretty narrow slit of it. Cut a little slat at the end, a little angle, just so I can tie it in without creating too much bulk back here. Now take your thread up to where you wanna finish wrapping your body. And what I've been doing, I've been making one wrap just to find out where the trailing edge is gonna be. Okay, it's going to be this side right here. And this step, totally optional. If you want to put a little rib on it, you know, grab a Sharpie and then just color one side of this foam. And that first one I did with black, this one I'm doing with red. Because why not? We'll see how it looks. And you can kind of get this as flat as you want just by pulling it a little bit tighter and put these little bands as close together as you want. But go ahead and take it up front and then catch it off. And this one, I think I'm gonna just go with a grizzly. 
Grizzly's a good hackle for almost anything. So standard dry fly hackle, I'm gonna catch it in up front. And how heavily hackled do you want it? You know, up to you. I want it kind of heavily hackled, it's bushy, but this white foam is certainly gonna help it float. So you don't have to go with too many wraps up here. Okay, I think that was five. I might have should have stopped at four because I'm starting to crowd my eye a little bit here, but I think we're gonna be able to fix that and get our, a decent looking head up here. So I'm just pulling all these back and then wrapping a, a few wraps right here. And it looks like I've nicked my thread there, but we're gonna be fine. And a four or five turn whip finish. And there we go. Now, here's a lesson for you. Probably should have let that, you know, that stripe on that foam dry a little bit because I've kind of smudged it with my fingers right there. Not too cool of me. But I think we got a pretty cool, pretty nifty little fishable fly. Certainly easy to tie. So that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.